Good job, as good young Tiff. So um, I'm not sure what your outstanding Yom Kippur moments were that you shared, but I'm sure the weather was a factor. Um, the dramatic rain, for good and for not good, that um, that slammed down over the Western Cape over Yom Kippur, and. Um, it's not usually uh, the weather of Yom Kippur, but it's definitely associated with Sukkot. Maybe not uh, as harsh or as extreme, but um, in Israel, in a land that is dependent on rain uh, for water, um, there are prayers that are said uh, uh, at the end of Sukkot um, to encourage and to bring on the blessing of the winter rains. Um, that are to start in Israel, please God, in a week's time. Water is so connected with Sukkot. In fact, during the time of the temple, when there was still a temple, there was a daily water festival where uh, water was brought from the spring up to uh, the temple mount. The Kohanim would um, uh, douse the altars with water. Um, it was a, a, a water-themed fun festival in fact, it was called Simchat Beit HaShoeva, the joy of the water drawing festival. Um, so much so that, the, um, that uh, Hillel said, whoever has never seen Simchat Beit HaShoeva has never seen joy. So somehow water and joy get connected in Sukkot. And one can understand that in a farming community, how much that must be connected, those first rains. I learned... Um, there are many interpretations to the uh, lulav and etrog, uh, to the arba menim, the four species, um, and we, we often teach them uh, over Sukkot, and I'm sure we will over the next week, um, the uh, parts of the body uh, or the uh, smell and fruit. Uh, but I learned a new one from Rabbi David Seidenberg, um, this um, in preparation for Sukkot, um, which is to think about, uh, I've been thinking about water all week, to think about the plants and the water that they need and where they grow. So um, in Israel, each of these are, are very water-dependent uh, plants. So the, uh, the palm, the lulav, um, is uh, of course the, the palm tree which grows uh, in the desert on the, uh, uh, the flat desert lands uh, that are dependent for water sources, usually around oases to be able to grow. The myrtle grows up on the mountains um, and, uh, and, and therefore is associated uh, with the, the, uh, the mountain regions. Uh, the willows, of course, of course, grow by the river. Um, in fact, this willow comes from the Liesbeck River because the Aravot, uh, as soon as I put them in, um, the leaves all fell off. So uh, on the way here, I popped off at the Liesbeck and got some Aravot uh, from the willows growing by the river. <coughs> so willows... Uh, are associated with uh, with river, and uh, of course etrog uh, is a is a citron. It's a citrus fruit, and it needs to be grown in um, uh, in farmland. Um, so it's associated with agricultural farmland. So Rabbi David Seidenberg's drosh is um, is to think of of each of these and how dependent they are um, on water, representing the different um, climate or aspe uh, land aspects of Israel. Um, the, the deserts, the mountains, the rivers, um, and the farms um, that, that, uh, that in, encompass the land uh, from which these four species grow. So all the more so, it got me thinking about the connection between rain and water, water and joy, and of course the festival of Sukkot, which is called Zman Simchatenu, uh, the time of our joy. So <coughs> if you... Uh, uh, live in a place where water is constantly available, um, you don't know that feeling of the joy of rain, but we know this. We who live in Cape Town, who live through nearly day zero, know exactly what it feels like when that rain comes down and to, f and to check the percentages of the dam and to, and to be connected with the water that flows, whether you are a swimmer in the sea or at uh, silver mine or dunking in uh, rivers or dams, um, water or just watching the beautiful uh, flow of rivers um, uh, coming down the mountain at this moment now. Um, we are so connected with water in this place and the Jewish people is so connected with water and this festival, more than any other festival, is connected with water. 
and that water is connected with joy. So I guess the, the drosha that, that I wanted to bring, the blessing that I wanted to bring this evening, is for us to have this opportunity over the next um, seven days um, to think um, just as uh, the, that uh, thunderous, dramatic Yom Kippur brought that rain that hopefully helped us um, to, uh, to cocoon and to sit in davening, in prayer, in meditation, in reflection, thinking about setting our intentions for the year ahead, repairing and fixing what it was that we needed to fix. So now, may we be able to have that blessing of that, that work that we did, the, the hard internal work um, that we did on Yom Kippur, as we make our way out of that space into our Sukkot, sitting under the stars, exposed to the rain if it should come, um, feeling, the, um, feeling the joy after the hard work, the satisfaction of Chag HaAsif, the festival of ingathering, um, the celebration of harvest, to be able to take a moment to think about what it is that gives us joy. When did we feel joy, unbridled joy, Joy that moved us, made us laugh, made us smile, made our hearts open and warm. When did we last feel that? And just like we at Yom Kippur were very intentional about setting our goals for the year and thinking about the things that needed to be repaired, may we also be intentional about creating the capacity and opportunities for joy in our lives. We are supposed to be the simcha. In fact, we are commanded over the next seven days to be joyful. Can we be intentional about creating the opportunities and possibilities that will make sustainable joy in our, well, m let's not say always joyous, but the possibility of regular opportunities of real joy in our life? What would that look like? What would that require? Would you need to change something in order to make that possible? Whatever it is that we need in order to have that simcha, as long as it's not impinging on the simcha of anybody else, may we find the ability to do that. May we have the strength and the courage to make whatever it is that we need to do to make that possible happen. And may we enjoy this next week, sitting our su in our Sukkot, shaking the Arba Minim, and enjoying the festival of joy. May the rain fall gently. May the dams be full. May your dams be full.